Although the city of Sleepy Eye did not exist in 1862, there are two monuments in town that honor the Dakota chief. Ishtakaba was born around 1780 at Swan Lake in nearby Nicollet County. After 1857, however, he moved with his band to settle along the lake near the present town. He was described in 1836 as large and well-proportioned, of rather dignified appearance, good-natured, and plausible. It is believed that his eyelids droop slightly, and his name, Ishtakaba, translates in English as sleepy eyes. He died around 1860 in Roberts County, South Dakota, before the outbreak of hostilities in August 1862. Chief Sleepy Eye was assistant Dakota man, and he was born and raised over in Swan Lake area near Nicollet, Minnesota. And they had some problems over there, and then he came to Sleepy Eye because Sleepy Eye was founded on sloughs, and he was a slough, uh, the assistant are slough dwellers. So he came here to Sleepy Eye and lived here just a few years, but everyone loved him so much because he was a very kind, good man and liked everybody, and everybody liked him. The uh, obelisk that sits just beside our Depot Museum building here in Sleepy Eye was erected by the Von Hagens, and he was head of the mill. And um, he sent Dan Farbo and another man out to South Dakota to get his bones about the turn of the century. They uh, went out there and picked up his bones and brought them back and put them under the monuments, and they are there. And it was erected about 1901 out of granite from uh, Morton. In the early years of the 20th century, the Sleepy Eye flour mill grew to become one of the largest such operations in Minnesota, and the company used images of the Dakota chief as its marketing tool. By the 1990s, however, the citizens of Sleepy Eye were ready for a new, respectful image of the Dakota chief. Dedicated on July 4, 1994, it was created by Native American artist and sculptor Joanne Byrd. According to Judy Beach, Sleepy Eye is the first city in the nation to have a full-size bronze statue of a person of Native American descent in their true likeness. Um, it started uh, in the late 80s, 1980s, and it was uh, going to be a Chamber of Commerce uh, project. And uh, I was involved with that as chamber director, and Mark Bido was involved with it as a, one of the committee people of, we formed a foundation to erect that statue. And uh, Paul Severson, a local artist, and Ray Leak, who was then the um, uh, Brown County Historical, a uh, Brown County EDA person, and uh, then also Jim Broick, our current mayor. And we decided on Joanne Bird. We talked, we talked about Grandland from St. Peter, Gustavus. And then we decided that we talked, actually we talked to Vern, uh, Vernell Wabashaw up at the, uh, the uh, casino and the uh, reservation. And she thought that it should be Joanne Bird because she was a Native American. Well, it really was exciting when we found out that jo Joanne's grandma's papers are from Sleepy Eye. But Joanne is, in fact, assistant Dakota, and as she was working through this, she found out that she also has Wapton blood, which she did not know. I remember her telling me uh, that she had asked her cousin, why didn't I know I was Wapton? And, and she said to her, when we were girls, it had to do with survival. This is an actual likeness of Chief Sleepy Eye. She went off the picture, the, the actual likeness of him, that was done by D.C. Hall in Washington, D.C. when he went to sign treaties. He signed four treaties, and he went to sign treaties in Washington, D.C. with other chiefs. And uh, he decided at that, they decided at that time that uh, this is a younger chief, Sleepy Eye, but Joanne gave him some age. And then she also worked into his braids, as you can see from the smaller statue there, some decorative leather pieces, and they did that for decoration. And then she did put a buffalo robe on him. <laughs>